Welcome to the J Train Podcast. This is J Train Jared Free coming to you live from the West Village of Manhattan. We're here every Monday with your emails, your stories, your questions. I say it every episode. Let me say it again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for viewing. We're on YouTube. Thank you for telling a friend, a brother, a sister, a mama, a papa, anyone with ears. We'll take them. We'll take them. Anyone who wants to listen or watch this fabulously produced podcast we love it also the special the special the special august 15th netflix i need you i'm gonna ask you for a favor go on your netflix set a reminder set the reminder you can go if you search jared this is i mean i didn't even know this i literally someone was like if you search your name you're on there i was like i'm on netflix it's crazy so i'm on there if you search jared f i i I pop up you see my face just hit the reminder button to let you know to watch it and tell a friend, a coworker, a brother, a sister, a mom, I need you. I need you. This is, you know, a decade in the J Train podcast making a special. It's coming out. It's got all the fun bits. It's got dating, relationships, breakups, gender reveal parties, late night eating, Jews. We talk about it all. So go on Netflix and tell everyone you can. It's coming. I mean, wh- wh- when does this come out, Shelby? So the, what's the date on that? So that's a, we're, it'll be a week away, the 6th. The countdown is on. So go, go, go. The special, the special, the special. I'm on the road as I always am. So, and, and it's a whole new hour from the special. It's all new material. Uh, Raleigh, Lexington, Colchester, Connecticut, Providence, Atlanta, Huntington, Seattle, Washington, Charlotte, Philadelphia, D.C., Baltimore, San Diego, Boston. JaredFree.com for tickies. Uh, assemble the group chat as you do for the special. I mean, the special is meant to be watched with friends and enjoy. Um, I got you know dating relationships. But I, it's all there. If you know, if you like this show, you're gonna like the special. Um, very excited about today's guest. New to the JCU, the J Train Cinematic Universe, uh, from Barstool and the Mean Girls podcast. Jordan Woodruff, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. It's uh, great to meet you. Yes, we've kind of I've, I've followed you on TikTok. Your TikTok fascinates me. <laughs> what? If I could say, when did you? What was your blow up moment? Because it seems like all of a sudden you were just on my TikTok. Like, I didn't know, where do you come from? What, what is, you know, you have a podcast at Barstool, but did the TikTok come before the Barstool podcast? When did you start seeing me? Like, recently or? Years ago, a couple okay. years ago. So, when I started on TikTok in 2020 during COVID, yeah. I was doing pop culture only. Okay. Like, I was the floating head always talking about the news, like TikTok tea. That's how I got my job at Barstool. But then Alex and I started the podcast, Mean Girl Pod, and mm. then I slowly gave up the pop culture what was it so when you first were on there where are you coming from where where are you doing the videos from oh my bedroom in minnesota in minnesota yeah and right so you're in minnesota we went over before we started you're not i thought you were from tampa but your family lives in tampa yeah which is very midwest of them to migrate (laughs) down to tampa on the west coast of florida yeah very not jewish of you my parents went east coast i'm from boston there's actually some fun if you look into that, it's because of the highway system. Okay. Supposedly, 95 goes down the east coast of Florida, and then there's another highway that goes down the west coast of Florida from the Midwest. There's like these, it's weird the way we migrate. This is all. Well, my dad's from Connecticut. From Connecticut. Yeah. So my, Moved to Minnesota. Yeah, for my mom. For your mom. Because they always say if you meet a girl in Minnesota, the guy always follows them back to Minnesota. Well, they say Minnesota nice. It's a very insular place. Yeah. It's like a tough place to break in if you don't know anybody there. The most, like, exclusive place ever. If you're not friends in high school, you're not going to make this friends. Is, this is what you hear. I have friends yeah. that had moved there for a couple of years. They were like, it's really tough. It's, and you don't know sad. until you're there. Yeah. Like, I made more friends in New York in these two years than I did 28 years in, or 26 <laughs> years in Minnesota. So what are you doing in Minnesota at the time? You're doing pop culture stuff, or what are you doing for work? Uh, corporate insurance. Corporate insurance. Yeah, I went to college in North Dakota. I graduated, and I started writing, like, corporate insurance, and it was horrible. And then pandemic hits, and you're like, I love pop culture. Let me talk about it. Yeah, so I always wanted to be on E! News as a kid or have my own talk show. And then one day during COVID, I was like, you know what? No one's going to see me anymore because in Minnesota, it's a little bit judgmental. Right. So I was always afraid to go on social media. But well, I, this is the Minnesota nice thing. Yeah. It's like a little bit like we're going to nice to your face, but we're going to talk about you to all our friends about, yeah. look at this crazy person who thinks they're famous and better than us. Exactly. Yeah. Like I started a few accounts like throughout my time in college and after college. And then I would notice like my friends would 
unfollow me or like their friends and it was just weird and then i got uncomfortable so i stopped but then during covid no one was going to see me so i was like i'll just do it right and then i started doing it and it took like six months to even get ten thousand followers yeah but it, i was like so passionate about it i had nothing else to do and and you were having fun yeah and i was having a blast and what was the big pop what's the big pop culture thing that like uh, like i like watch the bachelor i love yelling at the Bachelor. yeah so like that's like a show i like what's the pop culture thing that you were like most into tiktok T. just like so bryce tic- hall addison ray charlie d'amelio Hilarious. So this is, <laughs> and how old are you at the time? I was 26 at the so time, or 20, 25. I was you're 25. 25 watching these 20 year olds, yeah, and their relationships and things like that. I've always wondered, like, the, I have no interest in like the bre- like there was breakup news. I I just don't. I don't know. It it seems like it's it's yeah. very female to me. Oh, extremely. But like, I don't have an interest in it anymore. But at that time, I think since it was COVID, it's like all we could digest because right. reality shows weren't really airing anymore. So yeah. all we had was TikTok. So when you, what, what kind of made you lose taste for it? So would, would it get, cause these things start at like, Oh my God, so-and-so is dating so-and-so and it's fun. Yeah. And then you start getting more into it and you find out there's people that are into it in like dark and scary ways. Yeah. Well, like it's honestly, like I just kind of saw how pop culture hurts people. And like mm. then when I started having a following and like when people would st- say stuff to me or maybe start rumors, I was like, wait, this is actually like, really damaging. And I don't really want to be associated right. with causing more stress to people. So I was like, I'm out. Especially you're a single, single woman yes. living in New York. I'm yeah. sure people who follow you go, what want to know what's going on and you you know listen this is a podcast where we give advice i talk about my life i'm i'm out there on social media i've had breakups and yeah had to go on social media and and, and then go on a podcast and say what happened in my but you put out what you want to put out yeah. and what you're comfortable putting out and you do kind of have to have like these things happening not on social you know because the internet hates liars Oh yeah, hates liars. They and just hit everyone. They, well, they hate everyone, <laughs> but the, the but you have to do a form of lying to your audience as you get to know someone, mm-hmm. as you're going through dating relationships, breakups, and yeah, you will come out with that information. But until then, you're like, I gotta be a version of myself until I can be my full internet self. Yeah, you know what I mean. Oh yeah, I'm very broad when I because I'm pretty open on TikTok. I'm not yeah. as open on Instagram, but TikTok I like talk about my dating stories. Right. But I'm very broad and I change a few pieces so people can't piece things together. Right. You don't want to also someone's signing up to date you, but they're also not signing up to be like, you know, a personality on yeah. that thing that you know you want to be able to trickle that out i you know because i said i'm fascinated by your social media because you do you're you're very likable and then there's very like um it feels like you're the tiktok followers friend oh thank you i appreciate that because there's there's videos you do that i'm like i can't believe how big they get (laughs) because like it's like like it's you getting ready for a date and you're just dancing to music and i'm like yeah this is a video i would watch of a friend of mine (laughs) I appreciate that because TikTok is such a mean place where I feel like I'm so hated on TikTok. Oh, I don't think you. I, the that's comments not my, are bad. I mean, well, here's the thing about the comments. I do understand why the comments are mean on TikTok. Yeah. Because if you're scrolling and you're on that page where you think it's all done for you. Uh-huh. And then something that wasn't done for you ends up on your feed, which it can happen most of all on TikTok. You're like, this is jarring. Yeah. You know, I like I, I saw someone said I tweeted about it once where I was like, I do understand like where someone is moved to hatred. Yeah. Because they're like, wait, but I, but your videos are so fun. I don't Thank understand you. how they could be like, <laughs> like it's you like getting ready for a date or like dancing, like just like yeah. I'm doing this. It, it doesn't seem like you're not calling people out. Like I, I put up a video about like calling people out who come back from Europe for a month. I'm like, how are they going to talk to me? I can understand if someone's like, well, I can talk to you just fine. Like I'm calling them out. <laughs> it doesn't feel like you're doing that. I think the stoolie universe just like hates me. And a lot of my followers happen to be stoolies, mm. but they hate following me, which I'm like, I'll take it. Like why would that? I just, I don't, I don't know the Stooley universe well. I know it's like a lot of like, it's men. Yeah, like sad men who live in their mother's basement. Okay, well, yeah. maybe that's what I hate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, they also are offended probably by, you know, uh, a woman who's dating and I can't get a date. Yeah, that and could be it. probably that too. But that's their own problem. Again, it's always the person's problem, not the, it's the commenter, not the person. Exactly. But but yeah, TikTok's fun. I like your TikToks too. Thank you. They're I, very relatable. I, I, I'm, listen, 
37 and single, the special. They call me Mr. Relatable. I, it's all, rela- I, I don't know. I've, uh, I, it's funny when I started doing comedy, like, you know, you go to open mics and you'd see people, they tell their traumatic tale. And I'm like, I don't really have a traumatic tale to tell. So like, I would always just like, you know, my comedy was always, let's talk about the thing that's going on in my life, which happens to be going on in most people's lives, yeah. you know, and dating a relationship comes into that. So you have a Mean Girls pod. Yes. Um, and it, it, you guys are just chit chatting. What you, you, I see a lot of dating stuff on yours. Yeah. So Alex is my co-host. Alex Bennett. She's married. I'm single. She's from Oklahoma. I'm from Minnesota. So it mm. was like Southern Midwest, like naive girls moving to the city at the same time, giving their like marriage advice because she was married at 25, and then I've been right. single for five years. Got it. And just like what it's like being in New York City. Love it. Yeah. So and I'm going to be a guest. I'm, yeah. I'm very excited to come on. We're this pumped. Is, this is amazing. I was going to ask you questions, but I was like, I'm going to wait for our podcast. Okay. Well, 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 we got questions for you. So we're ready to go. Great. Everyone needs to follow Jordan. I, I got to say, the TikTok, I love watching it. Every time you Thank pop you. up, I'm like, this is like young woman, New York City, just the way you said it. Like, in like, it, it is, but there's some that you're like just dancing. Are you doing like, you're like, uh, you're doing a lip sync? And I'm like, and I'm like, this has 30,000 likes. Like, I, I can't believe you think people don't like you because I'm like, I, do, I it, truly do think people hate me. Right. Because so. I'm like, this seems like beloved. <laughs> like, like it, this is only a video I would like if I like knew the person. Some people must feel like they know you. I hope I that doesn't sound that. mean. I think that's... No, I cannot. I'm so thankful you say that because every day I'm like, I'm failing in social media. I probably should figure out a next path. <laughs> right. Well, maybe this was China's plan to make us all broken by social yeah. media and feel badly about ourselves <laughs> when really you're killing it. You're Thank doing you. a great job. You're living in New York. You got a great podcast. You got a great TikTok. Thank and you. And we're all... Hey, hey listen... Go follow Jordy. We have a female audience here. So yeah. we want to get, you know, the women, you go, you know, er- eradicate these sad boys that are bothering you. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. I know. I feel like both your podcasts are huge hits. Like, They're doing okay. You I'm, Up I'm, is always like massive on the charts. You Up is fun. Uh, yeah. Love doing that show. We, you know, it's it's weird because, again, feeling like you're a failure when you're doing okay. Yeah. You know, there are, I, there's a lot of dating specific, and I'm like, I always feel like I'm like, because I'm the, I'm very, there's very few straight guys in this let's talk about dating world. Yeah. And I do understand where, when I talk about dating, it can make someone feel like, ugh, I don't need to hear that right now. Oh, yeah. Because it's a little, like, I'm being, I'm giving you the guy side of things. It's a little bit icky. I try to make it consumable. But, but I girls do under- love that. They do until they don't. Yeah, it's <laughs> then, true. then they're like, enough, let me go. <laughs> You, let me go yas queen yeah. somewhere. And I do get it. Like So listen, before we get started, we're sponsored. Oof. Oof. Love this sponsor. Base. Airport anxiety is real. You're constantly checking to make sure you have your ID. The people at TSA are screaming for you to take off your shoes. It's a lot. Next time you fly the friendly skies, do it with base. Their luggage has both function and fashion to keep you calm and looking great. With 360-degree gliding wheels, a cushion handle, built-in weight indicator, washable bags for your dirty laundry, and tons of interior pockets to keep you organized, base luggage will be your new travel buddy. I took my base luggage, both the Weekender and the Rolly bag, all over Europe. Loved it, loved it, loved it. I even have a pocket. There is enough room. Where there's a pocket, I just put golf balls and gloves because I'm trying to get into golf. So I'm like, this is this is how good the bag is that I can use a full pocket for something I might not use at all. Like, that's a great thing. So I'm, I'm just saying, it has my full recommendation. I use it everywhere. It is, um, every piece is even made to look better with miles. So you can throw it in that overhead bin and get on with your life. For shorter trips, the Weekender is great. It has this bottom zipper for your shoes. Uh, right now, Base is offering my listeners... 15% off your first purchase. That's a lot of money. 15% off your first purchase by visiting basetravel.com slash JTrain. Go to basetravel.com slash JTrain for 15% off your first purchase. That's B E I S travel.com slash JTrain. Okay, here with Jordan Woodworth. Are you ready? I am. I'm excited. We had a nice little preamble. We got to know each other a little bit. This is our first time meeting. This is yes. Nice. Okay. Good. I've been following you for a long time, though. You have? Yeah. That's so nice. Because I'm, so- I'm big fans of. Um, Betches and then Raina and Ashley, Girls Got Eats, and I've always seen you on Oh, like, I show love going on. I mean, it started with Betches. That's the thing. Like, you know, I, we were talking a little bit before. The Barstool thing never really worked out for me with them. I, I tried. Yeah. Um, but then Betches, you know, it was such a fun, easy working relationship. And I just always fit in that world. And then Ashley and Raina come along. 
I've always had fun on their podcast. We always, uh, I'm going on in a couple, I'll be on there in a couple weeks. But um, okay, you ready? Yes. Obese future in laws. Okay. This is a tough subject. Yeah. This is going to get, this is going to get, we, we started you <laughs> in AP hot. math, okay? <laughs> I mean, dear Jared, all the feathers in the world. My boyfriend and I have been dating for about four years, and recently he brought up marriage in small, subtle ways. While I truly do love him in our relationship, there is one morbidly obese obstacle standing in the way of me envisioning a future with him. His parents are both incredibly overweight. In all honesty, I think his mom is at least 400 pounds. Not emphasizing for dramatics, I truly believe this is her weight. While I have no problem with his parents being whatever weight they want, I already see how this is going to become the elephant in the room in our marriage. I keep thinking she's going to make like a mean joke. Yeah. And she's like, like <laughs> she's being, nice. being nice, but like, like, why is she tempting us? She's like, elephant in the room. You know, like, it's like, she's like, I'm not over it. It's like, I, I and again, I'm not trying to be mean, but it's like, okay. Um, they are both riddled with health issues, diabetes, high cholesterol, etc. I fear that our future may be spent taking a lot of care of them. Will most likely end up costing me and him a small f- fortune and hospital bills. She is so far ahead of where I would be. Yeah. But she's right. There, listen. The you know can we move in with you okay you know like there's she's ahead he is very close with his parents visits at least once a month and talks to them weekly on the phone I'm torn because I don't want to break up with someone I love and see a future with but I also fear that my future kids might develop bad habits from them and might be squashed kidding but not real that's mean I uh, maybe she <laughs> like set she me wrote up that? she wrote that I didn't say that don't cancel me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I know, but I, it's funny the whole time I'm waiting for this joke to come and then she's like, yeah, they might sit on my kids. It's like, okay, well, well. okay. <laughs> I also don't want to insult my boyfriend and bring it up. I, but I feel like it's unfair for me to have to have them as a, a giant part of my life. This person, this she's is, smart. She knows what she's doing. She knows what she's doing. <laughs> she knows what she's doing. You're right. His, he has never, ever mentioned what their weight. I wouldn't even know how to mention it without feeling like I'm insulting his family. Any and all uh, help would be so appreciated. Thank you so much for everything you do. Best fucked up fat shaming. Yeah, they. I can feel, even though there's a lot of innuendo, whatever. This is a tough email to write. I yeah. appreciate the email. It is thoughtful. It is on their mind. This is the place for uncomfortable conversations. Yeah, Jordan Woodruff, what would you do? So honestly, her points are so valid. I wasn't really even thinking half the things that she said. And now I'm like, dang, like she really thought ahead of time. But the health thing would be big for me because genetically you have to think about that. Like if they have right. kids, like that would be my biggest thing. Right. I, you know, I hear this email. She loves this guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like and you go, well, if you love this guy and you're, you know, this, I think it's like important. To, let's concentrate on what we got, you know. Us two. Yeah. And let's make sure. I think that's the big thing. Let's get on the same page as the boyfriend. Yeah. I wonder if I'm assuming he's healthy. Well, it sounds like he's healthy, but he, also the fact that he's never brought up like their weight and they've been together four years. Like that's crazy. It's a, and they're four, like, again, like, listen, I have my own weight issues. I, my family, we all we talk about is food and our bodies and our weight. And you lost some weight. You didn't lose some weight. You gained some weight. It's all we talk about. So, to have it never mentioned, I'm like, wow, I kind of envy them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, oh, wow, this is like, oh, this is, we're okay with our bodies, whatever they may be. Yeah. I think she needs to get, like, I think to me, if I were in her position, the, the idea of like, oh, their habits will be bad for our kids. Grandparents are going to spoil kids no matter what weight they are. Yeah. Your, your grandparents are going to do things for the kids that are going to be not helpful to you. So I, I don't think that's your, I would more say to like him, I would go, here's how I would make my way in. Are you ever concerned about their health? Make it about their health. Yeah. Right? Like a thousand percent. Hey, have you talked, like, do you ever think about your parents' health? And then go, I think of my parents' health. Have you ever thought about it? And then get them talking. Yeah. She doesn't have to like attack them. No. You can talk about weight in a very nice way. You can. You have to be very careful. Hey, have you thought about these fat fucks and their health? <laughs> you know, like you can't come in and do that. You no. gotta go. Hey, I've like your parents. 
you know, are getting older, have you thought about their health? Have, have they talked about their health? Do they see the doctor? I, I don't know. These are, to me, when you're four years in, this isn't day one conversation. No. This isn't, hey, your parents are obese. What the fuck? No. This yeah. is four years in. I'm looking at your parents and... Are they doing okay? Well, he must be worried. There's no way that he can't be sitting here worried about their health. And it's weird that he wouldn't bring up those worries to his girlfriend of four years. It is a little weird. Unless he's oblivious to it. When 400 is a lot, you know, that's a. And both. Both. So it's like, it is is interesting that it has never come up. I, I don't know how. Yeah, I mean. I have and I, no relationship. But I, I feel like that's such a big part of it. Like you talk about your parents and their health. Right. Well, that's the thing. I guess that's the problem. This email isn't about their health because like I think if you're good as a couple, you're good. Yeah. I think, the, again, I want to live in the same reality as who I'm with. Yeah. So that's the biggest problem here. Do you live in separate realities? If you have never talked about his parents who are 400 pounds plus both, what are you talking about? Are you even having honest conversations? Are you getting closer? Yeah. I think this is like more of the the subject than their weight. It's like, hey, because if I was dating someone, they were like, listen, if they got sick, they're moving in with us. I would want to know that as a yes. character point. Like, to me, let's take it away from weight, okay? If I dated someone, they're like, my parents stay on my couch when they come into New York, I'd be like, we live in two different universes. Yeah. I mean, I dated a guy for five years, and I knew – what the situation was going to be with his mom long term because she was a single mom right because we talked about that right. like i knew the older we got the closer we would get to living near her right and and i guess this person's issue is like we've let it not i've not said something for so long that it will look it's gotten even harder for me to bring up and i guess any mention of their weight it's like i guess if I, from his point of view i'd go well how long have this been on your mind do yeah. you watch my parents eat and get disgusted by them like i would kind of go down that dark road and she's probably worried that that's going to happen but these are big conversations as far as like okay you want to get married what do you see for your parent i would even go what do you see for your parents in the future like yeah, do you yeah. see them like going in a home like those are and then it kind of that can get us on the road of like those conversations but you're not even yeah, family dynamics, I feel like, is such a large part of every relationship, and it's a, lot, a big reason why people break up. But it's mm. like, how have they, like, how has no one even brought it up to him? I'm even thinking about friends or all the I don't relatives. know if I would bring up to my friends that their parents are huge. I Yeah, but you think that he would hear it from somebody. Maybe right. not in the right way, but someone would say something. Right. I, or like I keep coming relative. back to the idea. I remember my mom once was like, why don't you get a pull-out sofa so I can sleep over? And I said to my mom, I go, how old were you? This was five years ago. <laughs> and I go, that's why I'm not getting a pullout <laughs> sofa is so that you can't sleep over. You go to a hotel. And I'm like, and that was me. A stat- and my mom, she would never stay with me. That's crazy. Yeah. But I would now this is my relation with my mom. Like you, a lot could be said from that. Yeah. A lot could be said from like, yeah, my parents don't fucking stay with me, whatever. And then you learn more about me from there. The idea that, you guys don't seem to know anything like for this not to come up is I think that's the issue you have to start with. Yeah. I'm wondering like if they talk about anything serious in their relationship. Four years in. Hey, how do you see it going forward with your parents when they get older? Well, just that question. Yeah. Let's start at that. Don't go. Hey, how much do your parents weigh? No, <laughs> it starts with what do you think is going to happen later in life? And that's a totally normal four year. in Yeah. Well, and I would assume she's probably in her t- mid twenties, which means her, his parents are probably in their sixties. Right. Normal time to start talking about your parents' health. J train podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com here with Jordan Woodruff. Woodruff. Wood- keep, Woodruff. Yeah. I keep, you know, it's a, like a mouthful. Jordan <laughs> Woodruff. I don't know why. Uh, people, a lot of people have issues with that. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's the letters, the maybe Jordan with a Y. Go follow TikTok, Instagram, Mean Girls Podcast, Stitch Fix. You already got your food delivered. Why not get your outfits delivered too? Stitch Fix is the easy way to get clothes that fit you without having to endlessly scroll through options. Just let their expert stylists do the planning and they'll send you outfits that they've handpicked just for you. Here's the best part about Stitch Fix. Your own mirrors. Right, Try on the clothes in your own home. You see what they really look like. It's no store mirror that's on an angle with the best lighting. No, no, no. You're going to get the real lighting, and you're going to get sent clothes that you're going to love, and then you just 
keep what you like and send back what you don't. Getting started is really easy. You just answer a few questions about your favorite stores, your lifestyle, your budget. They have a range of sizes from extra small to 3XL and over 1,000 brands to choose from. That's the best part. They're not just going to send you from like three stores. You're going to get 1,000 uh, brands to choose from. Your wardrobe will be totally revamped in no time. Once you, uh, your new clothes arrive, try things on, keep what you like, and easily return what you don't. Get ready for compliments with Stitch Fix. Try Stitch Fix today at stitchfix.com slash JTrain. You'll get... 25% off. That's a lot of money. You'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That's stitchfix.com slash JTrain for 25% off today. Stitchfix.com slash JTrain. Here we're with Jordan Woodruff. Uh, we got more emails. Moving back in with my mom in my 20s. A lot of parent ones. This is parent week. Oh, God. Dear Jared and esteemed guest. Are you close to your family? I am. Yeah. Yeah. You have siblings. I have one brother. One brother. I mean, we're close, but like not in the way where I'm like talking to my mom about like my <coughs> dating and sex life. Right. Like not like that. Close. Do they listen to the podcast? My mom does. Yeah. Yeah. So you <laughs> are talking to your mom about your dating. <laughs> she, I mean, she knows everything. <laughs> That's great. Uh, dear Jared and esteemed guests, love your pod so much. I've been listening to episodes every day over the past month. Feather, feather. I finally found out what that means. Beautiful. I always say when people share the podcast, it's like feathering my nuts. It feels good. Oh. So now people write it in feather, feather. Oh, I've never heard that saying. Do a lot of guys say that? Um, I don't know. I just, <laughs> Shelby is just me, right? I'm, I'm, feather, you, know. you say feather on my nuts? I'm saying it feels like you're feathering oh. my nuts. <laughs> I'm not a feather on my nuts. <laughs> like, I like that. I don't think yeah. I can use it, but I like you it. You can use it. Yeah, yeah, feather in my nuts. It's just like, you know, anyone can use it. I'm writing for some advice about an upcoming uh, change in my living situation. I'm 23. After living on my own for the past three years, I'm moving back in with my mother. I love my apartment so much, but the rent has just gotten too expensive. Most of my paycheck goes towards rent with little left over. And I feel like I really need to start saving more if I'm ever going to get my own house, travel, etc. So after a few stressful weeks, I decided to bite the bullet and move back in with my mom this September. She only lives uh, about 10 minutes away from my current apartment. But the reason I originally moved out was that my college years were largely taken up by COVID and I couldn't bear living with my mother. We really were not getting along and I felt like flinging myself off a cliff over any little interaction with her. Since moving, our relationship has greatly improved, although we still have our issues. My big issue is with her is that she can be extremely pretentious, will never apologize for any wrongdoings, and seems to always be ready to not take my side whenever I need to vent, talk about a normal situation. But if I were to act the way, that way towards her and pose any alternative to a complaint or view she may, ha she may have, she becomes almost mentally abusive. That being said, I am hoping the three years have helped me with boundaries I need and she will most like, uh, mostly leave me alone as she's a workaholic and goes to bed early. I'm wondering if you have any advice for how to go into the situation as well. As well as always, uh, as well as ways that I can expand myself beyond the house. I work full time, no coworkers my age, go to the gym most days, but don't like taking classes there. It's mostly older ladies, and I'm in a relationship with my boyfriend of over a year who is going to be a few hours away starting in the fall as he is starting graduate school. So not sure what will happen there. Most of my good friends have also moved away, and I feel very isolated. Any tips for how to get out there more and make the most of my new living situation? For reference, my town is right near your hometown. So she's in Massachusetts. Sincerely, I don't want to be stuck at my mom's house. Jordan, you, you look oh sufficiently God. freaked out. Don't move in with your mom. Don't do it. Don't do it. I think that your living situation is so much your mental health. Mm. And if you have a bad roommate or a bad living situation, it's going to take over your life. Right. It's like the root of your life. If the yeah. roots are bad, no tree can grow, so yeah. to speak. I just moved to a different apartment and the night and day difference, I feel, from just being in a different space is Who tremendous. are you living with now? Who are you living with before? Uh, same roommate. I met her on a random roommate site okay. coming to New York. Love her. We're like great roommates. She's from Michigan. But we moved. Uh, we were in a smaller apartment because like you have no idea what you're getting into in New York, like a literal shoebox. Mm -hmm. And now we live on the Upper West Side and it's a little bit bigger, but it's brighter and cleaner. I saw your video. 
Yeah. You had a video about how the Upper West Side, like the, the na- it's much neighborhood. Where were you before that? Midtown East. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. no. You don't want to be Midtown East. No. That's a, you're in a neighborhood. You're yeah. In a, there's actual people who live there. Midtown and they're East nice. Is, yeah, and they're nice. And No, no, no. I, I totally different. I mean, I live in the West Village. We're here. My, this area, like. This, this is a, a great location. This apartment, fine. It's whatever. The area, you're like, I, to walk around this area, I feel alive i feel good i i your living space is your mental health i totally yeah. agree with you i would say to this person there's a couple things i'll say i i think if you have to move home you gotta move home mm-hmm. it's three years later you're 23 it's a you're a different human being at 23 than 20 so let's remember that yeah and you wrote something very important and this is called growing up this is growing up is having taste and it's also knowing where to put your energies. She wrote something very important in her email. Since moving our relationship, uh, my big issue with her is that she can be extremely pretentious and will never apologize for any wrongdoing. Seems to always be ready to not take my side whenever I need to vent, talk about a normal situation. Well, guess she's not your venting space. Yeah. Let's remember that. You ain't gonna go to Mama Bear when you need to vent. She's not good at it. She's not a good vent catcher. You know, and that's okay. There are people in your life, I have people in my life that I know that I can go to for A, B, and C. That is not to say that A is worse than B or worse than C. They're just where I go to, there's people I go to an event that I know I can get good, constructive feedback from that that will go, no, you're right, that totally sucks. There's people I go to and I go, let's talk about, let's where are we going to go get drunk tonight? Because they're going to be fun, drunk people. You have to start doing that in your life. You have, and, the, and you have to start saying, well, that, yeah, my mom's not the place for that. Yeah. Well, and she also wrote that she, about boundaries, which is huge. Mm-hmm. I'm just hoping, like, I know she probably changed in three years, but has the mom changed? The mom has not changed. Yeah. That mom, scares me. Moms don't change. No. You're not going to change your mom. No. That's why I'm saying don't go to her for your event session. Yeah. Here's what I will also say. I think she wants to save money. Good. Mm-hmm. I get, he, he, for trips, you're going to save a lot of money. You have, she wrote a big portion of her. So move home, keep doing your job well, and let's start planning. Let's plan out the year. She wants to get out of the house. I think she's got to switch gyms. Get out of the old lady gym. Let's start upping. You know, it's like when you, um, you know, there's some people that have like like four thing items of clothing Mm -hmm. and nothing else, but they're really high end. Yeah. So it's like, this is the way I would do it. If you got to move home, and I agree with you, like, maybe don't move home. But the beauty of moving home is that you don't have to, like, talk to the super about a move out date. You don't have a lease that live by. So you can always, I would have, my tab on the computer would always include, you know, apartment hunting sites. Mm -hmm. You're always on the hunt. Maybe you find something, maybe you don't. But always keep hope alive that maybe I'm going to move out tomorrow. Because then it's your mom. She'll go, yeah, get the fuck out of here. Also, let's enhance the other parts of our lives. Join a better gym. Plan out the next six months of trips with the friends. Let's plan a vacation. Let's have things to look forward to. It sounds like you're very busy. Also, when you were 20, you were home more because you had classes at 8 p.m. and 6 p.m. and then the rest of the day you were at home. So you're not going to be home as much, so it's going to be easier. So you're not home as much. You're going to the gym. Let's get a nicer gym. Let's get nicer clothing. Let's live up our... You know, you know what I mean? The amenities yeah. of our life, let's make better. Yeah. I think that's the answer to her question. Oh, yeah. Because I, I feel like, too, if she can make, like, one or two <clears> other <throat> friends, if it is by going to a new gym or something else, like, that will also help keep her out of the house even more. Absolutely. Let's go to a nicer restaurant with yeah. a friend. Let's go to the nicer drinks. You can afford it now. You are taking, you're mm-hmm. getting all this money now. Yes, you're going to save. Let's do the buckets. The buckets. All right, some of it's going to go towards savings, and then some of it's going to go towards living a better life outside of the apartment. Better apart, better gym, better restaurants, better dinners, better trips. You go visit your friends. Hey, I'm going to do a weekend in Charleston. Want to come? This is all part of this. I yeah. think that goes hand in hand. So you want to make sure you're living a different life than you did when you were cramped by this rent situation yeah and just make sure you set the boundaries with your mom like from the get-go right i'm I, when i go away yeah th- we're two adults living with each other not i'm not your kid anymore mm-hmm. i am your kid they're not she's never gonna accept that but like <laughs> you know just say uh, hey when i'm gonna be going here i would even hey mom here are the trips i got planned out just so you know mm-hmm. get ahead jtrainpodcast at gmail.com jtrainpodcast at 
gmail.com here with Jordan Woodruff, Mean Girls Pod. We have more. We have a dating question. Oh, okay. It's good. coming. We, you're, you're like the parent ones. You're like, I'm out. The parent ones are hard because they're so controversial. Right. They're just like not a right answer with, with that. It's tough because we know your mom's not going to change. Yeah. That's just the, the, the heart of the matter. Uh, listen, we know things are busy. Before you slap together yet another sad chicken patty sandwich dinner, just hear me out. There's a better way to live. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, saves you tons of time and stress. They send amazing meals delivered straight to your door. They only take two minutes to prepare. They have over 34 weekly dietitian approved meals to choose from, so you'll never get bored. Here's the thing about staying healthy. It is incredibly difficult to cook for one or two, to buy the groceries, to go to the store. Also, it's tough to be creative. You're not a chef. You're not a chef. So when you want to be healthy, you're like, I'll do grilled chicken, I'll do salmon. Those are the two options. And then you go grilled chicken, salmon, grilled chicken, salmon. And then you give up. You go, I don't want to do it anymore. I'd rather go do takeout. Factor is going to have creative uh, menu items that are going to keep you doing the healthy route longer. That's what it's all about. How long can I stay good? So that's where Factor comes in. Impress your family, your Tinder date, or just yourself with Factor's Gourmet Plus options. They're upscale meals with premium ingredients like truffle butter and broccolini that keep things classy. If you literally never want to have to cook again, you can even add on Factor's breakfast items, snacks, and smoothies. Head to factormeals.com slash JTrain50. Use code JTrain50 to get 50% off. That's code JTrain50. Factormeals.com, JTrain50 to get 50% off. Factormeals.com slash JTrain50, code JTrain50. Okay, you ready? Yes. I need clarity on a ghosting situation. Have you ever ghosted? Like me ghosting someone? No, I, I have a strict rule. I will not do that. Have you ever been ghosted? Oh, yes. Multiple times. Okay, what did you do? When Anything? I was ghosted? Yeah. I mean, in the beginning, I always like made a big deal of it because be- I always wanted to know why. I always wanted like right. the closure. The older I've gotten, I'm like, why would I want to be with anyone who doesn't want to be with me? It's, right. so, it's such like a simple phrase, but it's really helped me like get over people quickly. There you go. Okay. Jared, I need- I've ghosted. I've been ghosted. I've, uh, you know, then I don't know. How many dates been- in did you ghost someone? I ghosted someone pretty badly um, in my past. Ooh. And I felt really bad. And then I saw them, and I think I apologized or said something about it. Um, it. It was one of those things. You know what happens with ghosts when you're a ghoster? I have a, a million eyelashes in my eyes. Uh, you know what happens when you're a ghoster? You don't mean to do it. And then it gets so far away that you're like, how do it's like the the person with the parents who are obese. Like, yeah, you go, ah, if I had just said it a little bit, then it would have been easier. Then you don't do it. Then you don't do it. Then you don't do it. And it's like, am I really going to text this person that I haven't talked to in two weeks that I, uh, hey, sorry, I've been gone, you know, and maybe they would like it. But you go, you get inside your own head. I, I think with the ghosting situation, we always hear from the victim of a ghosting. Mm hmm. So we never get a personality to go with the ghoster side. And the ghoster side is usually not hateful and is usually from an insecure place. And it's not from a, you know, that they wanted to hurt someone. They go and they go, oh, this is you know a little bit easier. And they were afraid and they didn't want to write the text. And sometimes the person who got ghosted, to me, I don't take their side as much because they... They want a brutal ending. Yeah. They want and and maybe the ghoster didn't have a brutal ending to give them. Maybe it's just this has run its course for me, which is like such a hard thing because then it becomes the breakup that has no reason. Yeah, and that's like so. I I, don't, I hate to like give empathy to the murderer here, <laughs> but like that, I know I'm like okay, I'm right, right. And you go, how hard is it text? And it's like. Because then you text, you go, hey, I just don't think this is the right relationship for me. And then it's like, why? And you go, I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, now you're in this position, well, I need closure. And you go, and you're kind of avoiding having no answer. Yeah. I mean, closure doesn't actually give you closure. And no. The only way you get closure is moving on on your own. Yeah. You know, you get your own closure. No one's going to give you closure. Yeah. You know, so this person writes, Jared, I need some clarity on a recent ghost that I'm still hung up on. Oh, I went out with this guy on a first date, had a great time. He took me out to dinner and drinks, and we left it on pretty good terms. Ended the night with a kiss. He was very into me. We were... (laughs) Was he? Well, (laughs) so into me that he goes to... Here's the thing. Speaking of eye terms, he had... I had a good time with him. Yeah. 
Because <laughs> what this sets you up for is disappointment. Yes. He was very into me. No, 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 no. You don't and know I, that. You have no fucking clue. <laughs> he wanted to bang you, didn't bang him. He was mad. People want to... <laughs> like, it, like, it could have gone... There's yeah. a million different answers. People want to ask all the time to go with things that they might want. Well, this is what sets up someone feeling badly from a ghosting. Yeah. Because sometimes someone gets ghosted and they, and they go, well, that was a fizzle. And it's like, yeah, because you didn't care. You didn't build it up to this big thing. You're already building this up. He was very into me. Also, I swear, if it's just one day... He liked I'm ripping you. this in half. Well, you know, it was one day in the ghosting, right? <laughs> we were texting throughout the week, and he asked me out again, then never got back to me. When I asked what's up, he said he had to focus on some personal things, but that we could meet up in the coming weeks. When I met up with him again, that is when I found out he lost his job. Fast forward, we went on a few dates afterwards, had a sleepover, had a great time, and a lot of chemistry, although by the third date, I felt he was off. Ooh, the dreaded third date. Oof. I asked him about the job hunt, and we talked about it, but moved. I asked him about the job hunt, and we talked about it, but moved on because it seemed he didn't want to get into it. Afterwards, I texted him a week later if he wanted to go to an art show with me. He likes art, and he never got back to me. My question is, did he ghost me because he's not in the right space to date because he lost his job? I asked because he went out on a few dates. I asked because he went out on a few dates, and of course, after the third date, I was expecting things to speed up. Did he ghost because he knows after a certain amount of dates that is that? Did he ghost because he knows after a certain amount of dates that the that is the expectation? I don't know what that means. Side note: I think she's saying like after three dates, is it like an unknown fact that like things should get serious? Which I don't think well, so. No, I don't think it's an unknown, uh, un, I guess, unsaid yeah. rule that we speed up from here. Yeah. I think you speed up because of just time spent together. Yeah. Through however many dates. Yeah. I, I, three dates with someone could be nothing. And three dates with another person could be like, wow, I want to like date you. Right. Yeah. Side note, I saw him on the dating apps again when I re-downloaded it's uh, so he's clearly trying to date around. Makes me think he doesn't want anything serious. We'll end it once it gets to a certain point. She's making a lot of assumptions about this guy yeah. without his explanation. I can give you an explanation for him, which I will. Oh yeah, but I same. just yeah. This is not. It's been two months. I'm still thinking about him. Can you please give me some insight on this? I always think if he wanted to, he would. But I also know men are very different from women, and that they don't have a good job situation or something personal happens, they back away. I wonder if they had sex during the sleepover. She mentioned the sleepover. Um, if sex happened, you know, sex. Yeah, I, I wonder that too. But I, I don't think it's important to the. What do you think? Well, just from like a female standpoint, I know girls get a little bit more attached after they have sex mm-hmm. with someone. Mm-hmm. Sure. Because all the chemicals and stuff. So right. that I could see. <laughs> I like the way all the chemicals were all crazy. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I agree. I, 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 I do understand that. But like um, there's no such thing as right person, wrong time. Even if he's not in the right headspace, like he's just not her person. Right. I, I guess. Well, she... She's make, she's trying to play detective here because yeah. she's like, he's on the dating app. I can see. So he doesn't want to. She's trying to give herself explanations why she wasn't. You know, she's trying to find reasons for why he that in place of. She's trying to avoid and she shouldn't think this. It's not a measure of you. So she's no. like, so she's trying to make it about other things. She's like, well, he's on the dating app. So he doesn't want serious. That's so it wasn't about me. It's just I want serious and he wants it. No, it's just not the match. Um, but more importantly, here's what happened. This guy's got no job. He still wants to fuck. Yeah. Okay. He's got, so, no, you're, you're so right. Just because he's got no job doesn't mean he doesn't want to fuck. Um, he still wants to go and meet women. I can say this right now. When he got with what happens for a lot of guys is if you're not in the right space, the job thing matters. It truly does because he's going, you know what? I'd rather just have no complications. There's first date to third date. There's no complications. Yeah. Nobody owes each other. He can disappear. He can reappear. You have drinks. You have fun. There's nothing to answer to. There's no, hey, we should do this next weekend. No. Mm -hmm. There's just fun and no responsibility. Wait, what number of date do you think that changes? Or is it situational? It's situational. I think it's all dependent on like... you. I think you know when you're in enough 
Mm -hmm. think it's a feeling more than a number. So it's like, you know, this idea of like, I know when I've been seeing someone enough to go, I shouldn't go on a first date. With with another person. With another person. Okay. And I think... Everyone knows that. Mm-hmm. I th- and I don't think it's male, female. I think we all know that. I think guys are very good at being blissfully naive. I think we, I, and I think a lot of women let guys do that. Oh, they don't know. No, we know everything. Mm-hmm. We, however you feel, we feel. When you feel it'd be weird to go on another date, so does the guy. Yeah. I don't think, I think he saw that coming. Oh no, I might have that feeling. So I'm going to back away so that I can not be bad guy yeah i think going out with you again you know doing the art exhibit and then he handled it wrong yeah well do you think too since he didn't have a job i can't imagine the stress of dating without a job especially as a guy with like the ego and you having to pay more like i can't even i can't have any big life changes and try to date right like i stopped dating when i was trying to move even Mm -hmm. like i just like can't be in that headspace so if i didn't have a job i'd be like i can't date right well if i didn't no he's not you're definitely not signing up for fifth date stuff. Yeah. Like art show. Like I, if someone was like, do you want to go to an art show and I had no job? I'd be like, I, I, what am I doing? What am I doing? Shouldn't I be, uh, how, do, how am I going to survive? Like, and even if I had money in the bank, I would still be like, Jared, what are you delusional? You're going yeah. to art shows? What do you think you are? You, what do you think? You're a Rockefeller? You're just going to go to art shows with your little glasses on and look like you have a job? You're faking it. You're a loser. You're, the, this is the thing. You, you do, do feel when you're out of a job, you're like undeserving. Your you ego feel. is just shot. Right. And for him, you can have an ego on day one and be mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'm looking. I got prospects. Things are happening. Day five, she starts going, how's the job hunt? And you're like, they even had that conversation. And she's like, how's the job hunt? And he's like, eh, and it didn't go anywhere. Yeah, because he's embarrassed. Yeah. He doesn't want to have to answer to you. And he's like, you know what? I can either answer to just myself and nobody else, or we can keep going out to the art shows, and I'm going to have to answer to her as far as what's going on. So mm-hmm. he said, and what guys do, and this comes up in the special, if you watch the special, we break up before the next step. We always, we don't work on the, the thing we got. We go, you know what? I'd rather go back to Tinder, back to Hinge, and go through all the, and, and, and talk to all the women where I have possibilities, not the reality. Yeah. And she's sitting there going, we could work on it. We had that great date. You liked me. And he's going, yeah, you liked me. I don't want to have to deal with answer that. to you yeah and then that's also so much pressure because yeah if i was looking for a job and i was dating someone i constantly be like please don't ask me if i've gotten the interview please don't ask me if i right. got the job like like when we're just having fun here i don't even like to tell my parents when stuff happens because then they constantly ask and i'm like i don't want to have to answer to anyone oh my god my dad called me the other day there's a coffee with j train on the patreon where i talk about this my dad he's like what's going on with the special i'm like there's nothing to report it's coming out august 15th i don't know what else to fucking tell you <laughs> yeah. And then I like mentioned like I got a nice text and he like turned into the, he was like started fucking with me about it. I was like, get out, get out of my life. I just don't. Why am I talking to you? That's you why know? I like being single because I hate answering to people. Single is so I always say this. I said this on stage and it got like a weird reaction. Oh, but I was like, being a guy and single is like being retired. <laughs> like you got no no one has you. You don't have appointments. You yeah. don't have to do anything. You're just like, what do I do today? Anything I want. And it feels like being single for a lot of women feels like uh, they're out of a job. Like, oh, I can see that, yeah. Because even this girl, she's like, I'm trying, I'm, I don't want to go back on interviews. I got this guy that I was working out yeah. with. And it's like, I, I get that. I think what she needs to do, she's calling it a ghosting and he's not. Yeah. I, that's the problem. But the, the problem with ghosting is one person can feel ghost and the other person could say it's a fizzle. Oh, fully. I feel like he's like, ah, fizzled out. Totally. Yeah. So I think she. For her mental health, if I were her, what she needs to do is stop worrying about what he thinks or thought it was. It doesn't matter. He's got his own shit going on. You need to admit to a couple things. I liked him. I enjoyed my time with him. I'm looking for someone to treat me the way he treated me on dates. Mm -hmm. Like what what did you learn from that relationship? And then she needs to dump him. Yeah. I think because it'll get, there's no possibility of him. She's sitting here going, I'm still wondering about it in two months. I would send the text. I know this is easier advice to give than to take. Mm-hmm. But I would be like, hey, you kind of, you came, hey, I thought of you the other day. It's really shitty you didn't answer my art text. Obviously, we're over. I just want to let you know that I'm done with this. 
Mm-hmm. That's a hard text to send. I understand that's like, I'm like, I sound like a hundred year old, like, <laughs> send this text and, and write it in perfect font. No, but if you send that, it takes away the possibility of them. That's why you're still yeah. calling it a ghost. Yeah, because guys don't really change their mind, do they? We do and then we don't. So we do when it comes to, we'll go, we will change our mind and then we will have sex and then immediately realize what we really want. Okay, so like <laughs> the sex is what makes you change your mind? You'll go, you do have this thing where like if someone from my past would be like, and you go, what? they were cool. I mm-hmm. did like them. Oh my God. And then you have this like run up to this and it doesn't, I, I, this is like post nut clarity kind of gets caught up in this, but it's not even post nut clarity. It's like now we're talking, we're having fun and then we're having sex and things are back. And then you go, and then you get to those mundane things. You're like, Oh, I, I'm maybe this isn't what I wanted. Maybe it was the same issue. I think there's that. Okay. Because I, I don't think, I think guys, are chasing excitement in a safe way. You know, like there's like an excitement chase where it's like, and then when you get past the excitement, you go, do I like hanging with this person? Mm -hmm. And then you go, maybe this isn't the right match. I don't know. I, I, I don't think this, this guy ain't changed. his. No. Yeah. I I don't think he's going to ever change his mind with her. J train podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com here with Jordan Woodruff. Uh, mean Girls Podcast. Go listen. Go check her out at Jordan Woodruff. Um, let's do this one. Long time, though shitty friend advice. Ooh. Okay. Dear Jared and guests, seeking advice on how to approach a long time friend. Do you have a close group of girlfriends? Yeah. Yeah. How many? Um, I mean, I have some back home, and then I have like a few here. I've always been more of like a two to three type i've never had like a group of 10 people i think it just gets too drama at that point i like that because that has to do with his email to set the stage we are in our 30s and have been friends since high school okay at the moment we are all in various stages of life married cohabitating self-destruction eat pray love etc <laughs> we are all still close living in the same area while also living our separate lives though make time for major milestones love the sound of this group yeah in multiple side chats and vent sessions, we've come to realize that we wouldn't be friends with Lauren if we met her today. It's the longevity of our friendship that's holding this thing together. Here are some examples of why we're at our wit's end. Forgot about our friend's bridal shower in which she was a bridesmaid. Oh, that's, that's a pretty big offense. Yeah, that's a big one. Lives beyond her means and asks us to front her money for group dinners while then traveling to Europe for a two-week vacation. Okay, these are big deals. Right. Showed up to a fancy birthday dinner celebration in pajamas because she forgot to pack right. That one I'm okay. I, I, that one I can under, I, It seems like she's very forgetful. Yeah. <clears throat> Is the absolute worst to travel with. I, you know, kills the mood in all group settings. That's a... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Can you imagine if someone, like, if you heard this about yourself... It would kill me. Kill me. Yeah. It kills the mood in group settings. Oh, my God. What a reputation. I thought these were going to be like catty little things, but these are like, this is a big deal. These are big deals. Yeah. Lauren has recently caught on that we've slowly stopped communicating with her. We got a text a few days ago saying, I have to talk to you guys about something. This text came immediately after she saw us an engagement celebration that she was not invited to. Okay. Oh, so they went to an engagement celebration. Hey, what are you guys doing here? Celebrating Rachel. It's like. That's brutal. Yeah, that hurts. We scheduled the dinner. It'll be three of us plus Lauren. How should we approach the situation? Should we let her drive the conversation? Should we come in guns blazing, prepared with a scroll of talking points, not show up at all in need of your wisdom? Sign too old for the bullshit. (laughs) This is, see, this is very female to me. Yeah, very. The idea of an appointment for a fight, like an argument, is batshit bananas to me yeah because i have but also it's the reason why you know life is gravity Mm -hmm. you have these batshit banana appointment arguments but you also have very close friendships in ways that i can't understand yeah so it's like it goes both ways it's hand in hand you get the good and the bad i have friends but 
if I'm going through something, I don't even know if I would even talk to those people. Yeah. So I know I don't lean on my friends, but there's no friends to lean on. So yeah. How do you interpret this? What What do you think? Well, my biggest, my first question would be: Have any of the girls ever told Lauren any of these concerns? Right. Because if that is a no, then I don't think this is fair. Oh, I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is something because how is she supposed to know that she's being a bother or right? Like you have to. It's like in a relationship, you can't just expect someone to read your mind. Right. You, if you've never gotten mad at her for the offenses, then why she would she must stop? Assume that that's what's uh, okay with everybody. And now I, feel I like, would want to know. You yeah. know, arguments are communicating. Yeah. So, if you've never gotten a fight with your friend, are you really friends at all? I don't think so. Right. Yeah. You got to have some good times, bad times. What the fuck? What's wrong with you? Why would you yeah. do that? And now if, she's going to be blindsided at this dinner be like, whoa, I, I didn't know any of this ever was on your minds. And she's trying. Yeah. She made a dinner. So yeah. I, I think like that in itself is her a little bit reckoning. Like, I don't even know if I'm using that word right, but like. So, right. yeah, uh, it sounded right. So, <laughs> <Sounds> I, <laughs> in my brain, <laughs> sound about. But right, her making the dinner after, like, seeing you at the engagement party, going, "Oh fuck, I didn't get invited." Yeah, and then her going, "You three, we got to talk." I think that's actually mature, very mature, and a positive first step. Yeah, also and, like scare, like scary for her because she knows three people are going to be going against her. Right, and I would say to her, I, I think you can't. S- Say to her, you kill the mood in all group settings. You, you can't say any of this. Like, because, right. That's so mean. <laughs> hey, every time we hang out with you, we all want to end our lives. <laughs> Thanks, Lauren. No, like, yeah. you, she, she might need actual therapy. Like, I, I think, like, what you have to realize is, like, this person's going through something of a certain nature. Yeah. So you have to be caring. I think, like, let's be caring, but also, like, state what you want from the friendship. Mm-hmm. Hey, um... Are you okay? I would start with like, I would do the dinner. Are you okay? Yeah. Let her talk to you. Yes. I saw you at the gauge party. She'll probably say to you what I would think. I saw you at the gauge party. It felt really badly that I wasn't invited. Mm-hmm. Let's say that's the conversation. I would then say to her, I don't know what's going on in your life, but the dynamic of this relationship is not one that I have with all my other friends. So I've kind of backed away from it. It doesn't make me feel good. I like that. That was right? actually well said. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Sometimes I spit out a pearl. <laughs> but I was saying, I, and when you make it about me, I haven't felt good mm-hmm. from our friendship, so I backed away. Yeah. Now we start, well, why? Well, there was that one time you came to the dinner, like, and you're asking us for money, and then you go to Europe. Like, I feel kind of used. Yeah. And then, I don't know about the packing the wrong thing, to the, but, you know, we had a bridal... I, I would speak... You each three. The problem with three people on a dinner like this is you start speaking for other people. You got to speak for yourself. Mm -hmm. That's how I would do it. I feel this. Don't speak for the person to your right and your left because they have their own issues. Yeah. And I think because that's when you get into ganging up. I also feel like Lauren maybe should have scheduled one-on-one dinners. Because even like if me and my friends are ever fighting, I hate when we get thrown in like a group chat. I always Mm. just want off like text and be like, we're going to talk about this together because their problems aren't my problems. Well, that's the thing about making it like we think you're a bad, you know, you're you're a kill the mood in group settings is not really a helpful note. Yeah. You know, like it's like I feel off put by blankety blank yeah also i think it is okay though for these girls to cut her out if at the end of the day she doesn't bring value to their friendship anymore well maybe they walk away from the dinner and they go i think her trying to make the dinner is her saying i want to make changes yeah i think so too you know like i don't i don't think you go to the dinner and be like okay what the fuck was my invite to the engagement no no no. she's gonna go yeah. what happened what's going on here yeah um but i do agree like listen you could walk away from this dinner talk it out and they go and they literally go, well, I'm not going to talk to those fucking people. And you might, maybe it's good riddance. But this is a tough one. I, I... Yeah, especially, I think in their 30s. 30s. That's a hard age to be having fights with friends. But it's also an age where you can talk to those. You have the social skills to talk this out. Yes. She's in her 30s and showing up to a fancy dinner celebration in pajamas. Like, something's off. I think you have to go in caring, hey, what's going on in your life? Are you okay? Yeah. And then it's, well, well, I'm only asking that because I've been feeling weird about our friendship and I feel that a uh, little, like I'm avoiding 
Yeah. Or like, why are you traveling? Then asking for money to travel. Right. Yeah. And also she might have jealousy. She might, you know, you guys, you said different phases, you know, if, if, you know, the married one with the kids, you go, well, you don't understand my problems. You, you marry, you're in the next phase of life. And it's like, Maybe there is no negotiation. Yeah. J train podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com. Shelby, we got time for one more. What do we got here? Let's do one more. I like this one. Okay. Because I think you can help it. This, this is a, a male emailer. Oh. Girlfriend hates my boys' trips. Oh, okay. This is going to be good. Feather, feather. I'll jump in and try to keep this short. I'm 26 male. My girlfriend is 25 female. I love her a lot. We are on the path to get married. Been together five years, live together. Why I'm emailing is because she hates when I go on my guy trips. I am a few years out of college. Most of my friends do well enough to go visit travel together. We do three to four trips a year normally. They're pretty standard, i.e. fishing, beach, music festival, skiing, or visit someone in their current major city for a weekend. All this is normal. Totally get it. You're 25. You got to hang out with your buddies. I get it. Reasons she doesn't like them is in college. I didn't tell her when I went to a strip club on one of these trips, and it came up through a friend a year later. <clears throat> this was four-ish years ago. With her being so close with my friends, she knows all about the girls they have hooked up with and who is single, so she worries the trips just turn into talking to a ton of girls, which is understandable, but they don't. Other problem is we don't travel as much because she isn't as stable financially as I am, so I would have to pay for a majority of all travel, and she wants to do things on the higher-end scale so they get pricey. What is the best plan of action? Well, it looks like she's not going anywhere on a trip. I mean, it doesn't sound like she dislikes the guy's trips. It sounds like she just doesn't trust him. Right. There's a lot of trust issues in this relationship. Right. She, he, he writes a little star here. We were going to NYC in September for the U.S. Open, but she still hates every guy trip or I, I go on or plan. It's kind of hard because I do really love traveling with my buds. It's always affordable and more relaxed to just see my buddies because I don't live near most. I think the biggest thing that bothers me is she always wants me to do big trips gifts for her, but I really get that in return. Any advice, brother? Well, there's a lot more wrong than what you're writing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The idea that, because it's a mixed message. Yeah. He's like, she doesn't like my guy's trips, and then she wants big trips, and they cost a lot of money. Sounds like there's And I don't get any trips in return. Yeah. Like jealousy, communication issues. Sounds like she maybe resents the friends, but for the wrong reasons. Right, and and here's the problem is that it's like headline, you buried the lead, yeah. as they say. Like the headline is like, she hates that I saw strippers four years ago. It's like... So no, she hates that you lied about it. Right, and then kept it for a year and then she found out through other avenues and then you don't like going on trips with her so you're kind of miserable. It's like there's cracks in the foundation of this relationship, Yeah, right? you should like going on trips with your girlfriend. You should like yeah, spending and, time with and her. And she should like you going on the trips too. Like, like, yeah. yeah, like, I, I, I wouldn't date someone who didn't, who was just mad at me for. A, a, also, I wouldn't date someone who's mad at me for a strip club thing that happened four years ago that no. she found out about later. It, it would be such a small thing to me to go to a strip club. I'm not a big strip club guy at this phase of life, but I would say, I would also be like. Yeah, I'm just going to go with the guys and do what we do. Like, yeah. you know, and I'm going to be me. You know, I, I don't know. I, I Well, I couldn't date someone who didn't like my friends. Right. Like, I've ended things with guys because my friends hate the guys that I'm dating. Really? Mm-hmm. I mean, they were a piece of shit. So. <laughs> well, that's because your friends were probably telling you that they were being an asshole. Yeah, they're like, they suck. But, right. but I value their opinion so much where I could never date somebody if like they didn't like each other. Right. But it's someone who's good to you. They're going to like. That's yeah. the thing. <laughs> yeah. I, I think the other thing about this is like, you, you're right. And it's also like, I've had this where I'm the single guy and you could tell that like someone doesn't like their guy hanging out with me because I give them kind of a window into this world that like maybe mm-hmm. they're missing out on. And it's all insecurity. Yeah. It's not me. I just, and the idea that I'm at a bar like, come on, we got all these women. Yeah. It's not what a trip is. That's not what the trip is at no, all. I feel like girls don't realize, I feel like when guys hang out, they just like, I, don't, I feel like girls aren't even on your mind really when all the boys are together. It, here's what guys trips are. We make fun of each other. We eat a lot of food, we fart, we <laughs> shit, 
and we point at girls from across the room and go, look at how hot she is. Yeah. Without ever talking to her. <laughs> yeah. That's a guy's trip. And yeah. that's it. Mm-hmm. And maybe once in a blue moon, someone hooks up and we're all just like, give us the deets. What the fuck happened? Yeah. How did that happen? We're like, can't believe it happened. Yeah. And if you go to a strip club, it's not like you're doing anything with the strippers. The the whole like I don't like my guy going to a strip club thing to me is so immature, so stupid. I don't get it. it I never got it. I never could understand why like the idea that this like this rules in the house. I don't know. It's just like I'm with you. I, I it doesn't bother me. Right. I, I don't know. Whenever I hear it bother someone, I kind of like just. I actually think again. We both came to the same. We think less of their relationship. We yeah. don't think less of the guy who went to the strip club. We think less of the the two people who are together and don't seem to communicate. Oh, fully. Yeah, like, I think there's a lot of underlying issues that... If I were him, I would sit down with her. I'd be like, hey, let's yeah. talk. Um, I feel I feel annoyed that I get judged for every time I go on a guy's trip. Yeah, also they're so young to be having like this many issues. Right. Well, they build up. Five years together, that she's 25, he's 26. He's like, they start when they're 21. They might be different people now. Oh, fully. Right. And it seems like they're different... In- like financially too, which is a very big factor in a relationship. Right. And you know, what ends up happening is you use each other as a crutch. Mm -hmm. If you've known each other since 21, now she's like, well, I want to go on the big trips and he's at big trip land. So he's like toting her along and now he's resenting her. Oh yeah. Like I, I would have to date someone who's on a similar financial level as me. Right. You want to do things together. Yeah. Cause I like experiences. Right. You gotta have a big talk, buddy. Yeah. Brother. Big talk. <laughs> J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Jordan Woodruff, thank you so much for coming on. This was fantastic. Thank you for having me. And yeah. Then, and then you're on Mean Girl next. I can't wait. Everyone go follow Jordan at Jordan Woodruff. I'm Jared Freed. We're here every Monday with your emails, your stories, your questions. Keep sending them in. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Go check out the special. Make it a reminder, Netflix. Back next week. Boom. <laughs>